A man next to a crying baby opens the emergency door on a plane. This is Randolph in Marietta, South Carolina. Let's talk about that. Good mythical morning! Good mythical morning. This episode is brought to you by the Rent Link store. Go to rentlink.com slash store and get all types of merch, including the Dope Zebra t-shirt. I hear it looks great on everyone. It looks great on everyone. I say that all the time, and you've heard me say it. Yeah. I believe it to be true. Support us, support entertainment. And, yeah. and do yourself a favor. Do yourself a favor? What do you think? And, and, and buy the shirt, because it's... Because your shirts suck. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? <laughs> do yourself a favor and replace the current shirt that you're wearing. In the news, shocking report from Hanoi, Vietnam... A mom with a screaming child wanted a quick getaway from a plane on the tarmac in Vietnam and asked for help. The man next to her obliged by opening the emergency exit and triggering the escape slide. Because you know when you know halfway through through the through the plane, the plane, you've it's got called a plane. You've got the seats, and then you've got the door, and that door, if you open it, has the has the slide. It, it's like a it, it inflates. <laughs> And then, then you can get on it and now, slide on up. Now, we've sat there before because you being as tall as you are, you like the extra leg room, and I don't like it because you can't recline back if you're in the first of two emergency row seats. They don't recline. But you, if you're in the back emergency row, it does recline. You can't rec that's the best of both worlds. That's the, that's the hot seat on the plane, other than first class or business class. But they give you a speech when you get on that plane, when you get on those seats in the plane, and they say... Everyone, look at me. Do you acknowledge that you're in an emergency row? And you have to verbally yes. say yes. You can't be like texting. You, and you, you can't to... you can't even nod because I've nodded before. I need, I need a verbal agreement. I need can, a verbal can you, ascension. Can you say yes? Can you say well? Yes, I can say yes. I mean, is this an intelligence test? I can open the door. And then they ask, "Do you all speak English?" Yes. Don't say like C. Don't be smart. Don't nothing. It never works to be smart in anything related to the airports or security. Trust me. There's a flag flying around here. I'm gonna. You want me to kill it? No, just you know, just let him live. He's like a co-host. Be merciful. But in I, what they don't say during this speech is they don't follow up. Do you speak English? And do you? Can you say yes? They don't follow that up with if a woman has a crying baby near you and asks you to open the door. Here's what you should and shouldn't do. do I've no, never but... been told that. So. You know, th this is uncharted territory. I'm, I'm feeling for this guy because I know what happens, right? A plane lands, it's been a long flight, baby is screaming. The woman, you know, is it the woman who, who really, oh, she, it says the woman wanted to open the hatch. Well, I thought when you read the article that what you were about to say, which is what I would have expected, is this guy is just completely out of his mind after right. being next to this baby on the plane, which we all know how that is. And then mm -hmm. he's like, I got to get out of here. Sometimes when I get to the end of a flight, just because I don't fit on a plane very well, I just wish instead of filing all of us out down the row, they could just, the whole side of the plane could just go like something in Star Wars. And then you just, you just like wings on a, like a Lamborghini. The whole on thing. A Lamborghini? The whole side of the plane just go, and then you just kind of shimmy down. Or shimmy, shimmy down what? Just, just the side of the plane. Or there's like rope ladders. Or, or, a bunch of rope ladders, because I want it to be cheap. I'm trying to make this whole thing cheap. I'm th I'm taking that into account. What about what about women with screaming babies? They can't go down rope ladders. They need slides. Well, they can just go out the, the regular door. She didn't go down the slide. After after all this work, she didn't even go down the slide. Nobody went down the slide. She got cold feet. If you're gonna ask a guy to open the hatch and he does it, woman, you better go down that slide with that baby. I'm telling you, and I think you get in, I think you get in trouble when you do that because oh it's, yeah, uh, there was a guy last year, the guy who on the one airline, the flight attendant who like gave him the finger and had, took a, a glass of champagne or whatever, and then mm -hmm. slid down the hatch. He got fined for that. Oh yeah, this guy got fined too. Uh, the man identified as twenty year old, twenty nine year old Lee Van Tuan told a authorities the child's mother asked him to open the door so she asked me so she and the child could exit faster an airport official says the man will be fined up to 950 dollars mm -hmm. 
And get this, guess how much it will cost to refit the slide? Well, I can okay. see it right there. Ten guess, people, guess. $10,000. $10,000. So he doesn't have to pay the cost of refit. First of all, you know, I, I don't believe that's true. $10,000 to put a slide back? They're just making, they're making that up. They're ma they made that part up. Don't take the plane back to the dealership. Go to a, go to a third party authorized slide repairman and they'll give you a much better price. In this woman, Vietnam airline. In this woman's defense, kids can drive you crazy on a plane. Very recently, as a matter of fact, we all flew. We flew home to North Carolina back in uh, October, and then we flew back, and we flew together. And coming back, now this is a big entourage. We don't really call it an entourage. It's sort of just oh, yeah. like two families, four adults, four adults, and five children. That's when our families go together, and we've got kids raising uh, ranging from ages one to eight or nine. How are nine now? Almost, almost nine. And so these people are just freaked out. So. And we and we got our flight late, so they put us in the back. And so we're doing the the parents on plane version of a walk of shame, which is yes, I am traveling with this many children. And I just remember as we started walking down the aisle. I'm sorry. And we got to I'm the sorry. back of the plane. I'm sorry. I'm I saw sorry. the people's faces all kind of being like, oh crap. And I was just like, you know, I'm gonna break the ice. And I said, people are scrambling. People are looking for exits. They're thinking about slides already, they don't, we don't, haven't even taken off yet. I said, welcome to hell. I just addressed everyone in the back of the plane, welcome to hell, and one guy laughed a little bit. But there were several people who were like, uh-oh, he's like, this dude has embraced the fact that my, his yeah. kids are going to completely drive me crazy. But our kids were good, they were great. Yeah, they did great, even, even Lando, who was, you know, a year and a half old, which that's a dicey age. Once you get to two and you're a toddler and you know, you're supposed to sit in, a, in the same place, sitting in, a, in somebody's lap for you know three to five hours, and we usually try to put them in a stranger's lap, so that makes them even more antsy. Mm -hmm. Christy was on a flight with Lando one time. I was not with her. We were I don't, I don't know what we were doing. I think we were shooting Commercial Kings or something. She had to travel somewhere. Anyway, she was on the. She told me this story. She sat down with Lando on the on the window seat. And you know, he was he was not crying, he was being nice, he was he was looking out the window, having a good time, raising and lowering the shade, like hadn't all, taken off. All kids love to do that. Woman sits down next to her, looks her right in the eyes and says, It's important that I get some rest on this flight. Can you keep your child quiet? No, I was planning on make letting him make as much racket as, as possible. Yeah, I mean after that, I mean I, I Chrissy taught her a little lesson, you know, pinchy, pinching Lando. Rah! I'm making him scream, squeal. She put on her sleeping mask and he's just grabbing it. Even Not more, really. He's a great child. Even more recently than that, speaking of wanting to escape, to get off of a plane. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I told you about this. Coming back after Christmas. We, we did not fly together. We decided to take separate, take separate flights. Right. We wanted, we wanted to make... Um, may, potentially twice as many people miserable on flights, right. so we split up. So I'm uh, with the connecting flight. We had to we had to fly from Raleigh to Atlanta, and then Atlanta is like the Delta hub. So you go from Delta to LA, and you get on a big old plane. You get on one of those planes that's like three seats, then like five or six seats, and then there's another row, and then there's three more seats. I mean, this is like a plane from Lost, you know, the the show, big plane, and. Uh, We've got four in my family, so we had three sitting here, and then we had one other seat that was across the row, on the on the edge, across the aisle, on that middle row. So one person from your family would be the odd man out. And usually the way that we do we do this is, Jesse and I flank Shepard, our two-year-old. We sit on each side of him when we have to sit like this, and then we let Locke, our eight-year-old, seven-year-old, soon to be eight, sit uh, next to a stranger. Now the reason we do that is because Locke, you, know, you typically people are easy to talk to. Locke likes to get to know people, and we're sitting there right next to him, so it's not like anything can happen or whatever. And you talk to him a lot, so you might as well let a stranger talk. Right, to him and we're trying to, and, he, and you know, he plays his DS and stuff. He kind of keeps to himself a little bit, and we're trying to keep Shepard under control, and that takes two parents. We don't want to give one parent that responsibility of having mm. to take care of both kids. But as we get closer to our seat, I look at that open seat, and right next to that open seat that Locke is supposed to sit in, there is a man with a towel draped over his legs. 
And on this white towel, there are blood spots all over the towel. Oh, gosh. And there's like clotted blood and fresh blood. Now, was he just in a towel? Like he had just gotten out of the shower? Like a sauna situation? No. <laughs> yeah. This is like- He had old clothes. He was in a suit, actually. He was in like, kind of like a crumpled up suit. He was an old guy. Oh. And, and but he had a towel apron. Towel, no, just a towel draped over his two legs. Like, With blood stains on it? Lots of blood, fresh blood stains. And a lot of them concentrated right next to where my son would have to sit. So I looked at Jesse, I said, listen, you sit with the kids, I'll sit next to blood man. And so- Well, that's very considerate of you, Rhett. So I sit down next to this guy, and the first thing I say is, sir, uh, there's- what, what was he doing? Was he acknowledging you or no, was No, 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 he was, he, he was in his own world. Something was wrong with this dude. I think he was about to die. Oh. Or something. It was mm -hmm. not pretty. I was just hoping that I wasn't about to be about to die. So at this point, you don't, either his thighs could be bleeding. No. And some blood could be coming through them. I could tell that he had been, he had, this was coming from somewhere on his person and he was collecting it with the towel. But all I said was, sir. And he kind of, kind of looked at me a little bit. I said, sir, there's, there's blood on this. As <laughs> if to say, I'm about to come in contact with your blood on a plane, and I don't want to. And so, he what's was, your problem? And so he was like, uh, "I'm sorry," and he kind of like moved it over to the other leg. But then the whole and the whole he was coughing blood up. Is what oh, it was. he was coughing blood up. And you I saw him cough the blood up. Yeah. A little would bit. he pick the towel up, or would it would it just hit the towel? He would do it into the towel. It makes me want to vomit a little bit. He'd pick up the towel and rah. This guy and should then, he should not have been on a plane first ooh, of all. Well, he could he could have been transmitting some disease to all of us. But at least he wasn't transmitting it to my son. And the whole time I just kind of, I couldn't relax. This is like a four and a half hour flight. I just kind of sat there kind of up against one side of the other side of my seat, kind of looking over at him, making sure I wasn't coming in contact with it. It was. You escaped. You didn't come down with anything. That's no. been many weeks. But that's the point when you turn to someone near you and you say, open the escape hatch. I'm taking the slide. It, in. You know, but th here's what I think. I think this I would have taken the old man and thrown him down the slide. No, you wouldn't have. I wouldn't do that, people. But Are this, you crazy? I think the woman should pay some of the fine. That's what I think. I think I should have gotten a slight refund. You may think I'm insensitive, but this, I don't, I have sympathy for the old man, but he shouldn't be on the plane coughing up blood. I mean, this is like a public place. Share your plane horror stories. What did you want to escape from? She should share the fine. Induce laugh attack with each other. This is something we used to do as 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 kids. Uh, we would just sit in each other's rooms and look at each other and laugh, and it makes you laugh, and then you kind of get into this laugh, laugh spiral, and we're gonna end the show like that today. Be careful not to spit on me, though. I'm not gonna cough any blood <laughs> to your face. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching.